Hello, welcome back to another episode. The assessors, their friends, and those they care about appear to be getting closer to the beast's belly with every new episode. The devil isn't playing around anymore, and he has a firm grip on those beloved personalities thanks to Leland. The assessors were requested to assist with a possessed guy who had been kidnapped from a cult, living up to the title The Demon of Cults. When it comes to cults and possession, that seems very commonplace. Owen had been possessed by a farting demon with a strange sense of humor. So when the family got their kid back, they only received a portion of him. The possession had some loose ends because it mostly served as a motivator for the gang to join the Yeshua cult. David followed the boundary the devil had drawn through Owen, which everyone was warned not to cross. Yet nothing occurred when David entered. Odd, it must have been left on the editing room floor to explain how he became possessed and why he was kept for five weeks before anybody thought to call someone with a little more expertise in exorcisms. Maybe there will be more to Owen's story in the future. The best thing the story accomplished was reuniting Katja Herbers and her co-star, Michael Chernus. They are outstanding everywhere, including in that series. Because exorcism is the sort of priestly service David wants to do within the church, the possession also gave him a chance to put his newly acquired power to use in practice. The real fun started, though, after they arrived at the cult. There are several possibilities for Ben's visit to the research lab, some of which are useful for the cult storyline. When Ben encountered Renee at the cult, he was overcome with emotion because of her remarkable scientific abilities. She is not insane. Look, I don't believe in all this, okay? Sorry, I, I don't believe that you're channeling Jesus. What in the name of Satan was she doing there? As he continued, it became clear that she wasn't simply there. She was Yeshua. That didn't bother David. He had bonded with her before. He was excited to learn more because he always has so many questions about everything. Ben probably hasn't had a phantom twin since his previous relationship. Ben's time with Renee turned from sexy to a little more terrifying when Renee jumped out of bed and warned him not to panic and to be ready to witness some blood. He collapsed over in pain as he sat there in shock. These scenes were so masterfully constructed. The suspense and uneasiness persisted as Ben was restrained and held against his will as Renee brandished a blade in front of him. With the goat on stage, the bait and switch was expected. But it was also simple to envision Ben allowing doubt to set in despite that. He couldn't believe what was happening in front of him and was anxious to call his friends on his cell phone. It was a gory sequence with just a hint of the comedy that evil is so good at. The ritual had already concluded when David and Kristen showed up there to provide some help. Ben was covered in blood and acting much as he did after going to the science room. Ben enjoys learning about new items and their mechanisms. He had personally observed a cult sacrifice and ritual and was still alive to speak about it. And maybe, just maybe, he will be absolved of responsibility for his mother's passing. Yes, he scoffed at the notion that taking part would be of any benefit. He doesn't believe in those things, after all. Kristen doesn't believe it, but her world was altered once she had her experience in Evil Season 2 and was subsequently cleared by David. Even if you disagree with what others do, like so many of us, it surely won't harm to follow suit, just in case you're mistaken. You never know whether or when that confirmation could come if you have an open mind and wait for it before you believe it. Ben will hopefully discuss his trip and explain what he went through. Kurt was likewise standing on the edge of something unknown. Sadly, I do not believe his liaison with the devil will be as reassuring as Ben's warm, violent conclusion with the cult. Lelan continues to hang out in places where he is neither needed or wanted. Victor eventually explained the need for them to keep a watch on Leland in order to make sense of his intrusion. And they do but not very effectively. Kurt praised Sister Andrea for not exposing him to the tribunal since Lullen just so happened to be picking up his possessions from the church. He wants Kurt's help with some dirty work right now. Lullen performs various tasks on his own. He's been spending time in the video game interacting with Kristen's kids, and he and Andy are everywhere. Kurt doesn't have to step in and deal with Sister Andrea for him. The terrible therapist was only too happy to take on the task because he wanted to control Kurt. Kurt's adventure as he refers to it, has left him mentally confused. He believes he wants to write a book, but his motivations are far deeper. His inability to write provided Leland with the ideal chance to strike a deal with him since something wicked is what is motivating him to do it. From what we witnessed, Kurt experienced a writing block for around three minutes. That moment scarcely seems appropriate for selling your soul. You'd think Kurt would be hesitant to sleep with Leland after what he's seen. People must experience the fugue state while Leland is present. Thus it must be this. They are unable to operate normally and miss indicators they would normally perceive. They act in ways they wouldn't typically. Kurt could have allowed himself some time to let the words flow if he had been that interested in writing a book. Instead, 
Kurt didn't think twice about taking Leland's first offer. I'll get to that. Kurt completed the task instantly. Since he didn't want to sing, he thought he could get away with only a partial ritual. However, the record forced him to come to his senses and take action. When you look down at your hand and notice that it has been changed into something demonic while you are still writing, you know you are being tricked. Simply insane, that. Kurt didn't consider the horrific scene playing on the record player either. The record was quite amazing since it quickly transitioned from a lovely sight of a little child chasing a bird and having a good time to the same girl brutally killing the bird to a bloody pulp. I'm curious where they get their ideas from. The writing room for evil must be a hoot. However, the delicious taste of prosperity was cut short much too quickly, as with all the devils has to give. As Kurt's annoyance at losing his inspiration was mounting, Leland returned with another enticing proposal. Thanks for watching. Comment below. And don't forget to subscribe.